After visiting Iraq and Afghanistan, U.S. Senators John McCain, Joe Lieberman, and Lindsey Graham arrived in Israel. The three visited the PA-controlled areas in Judea and Samaria and met with PA officials before coming to Jerusalem. At a news conference in the capital, the senators addressed three main issues, the Obama-Netanyahu meeting, the Iranian threat, and their impressions from their meeting with PA armed forces. Regarding Iran, the senators made it clear that all options, including a military one, are still on the table. The, the possibility that uh, this Iran, this government of Iran, would uh, attain nuclear uh, capacity is, is simply unacceptable. And it is the central challenge to security in this region and the world today. It unites uh, Arabs and Israelis and Americans and a lot of others. We are glad that the United Nations passed the sanctions. We are proud to have played a small role in the enactment of sanctions and stiff ones through uh, the Congress of the United States. And we have seen some actions by some of the oil companies and other international organizations. But it doesn't change the fact that the Iranians continue to express their commitment uh, to the development of nuclear weapons, which is obviously has the most serious consequences, both for the state of Israel, the United States of America, peace in the world, and stability in the entire region. We will use every means uh, that we have uh, to, uh, uh, to stop Iran from uh, becoming a nuclear power uh, through diplomatic and economic uh, sanctions, if we possibly can, uh, through military action, if we must. Following their statements regarding Iran, the senators were questioned about their attitude towards the option of an Israeli attack on Iran. I think it, it uh, in all due respect, that's a hypothetical question and one that would be dictated by so many different circumstances that it's impossible for me to respond to. And in my view also, there's no options that can be removed from the table but I don't believe that we are at a point of making that kind of decision, nor is the Israeli government, given the uh, state that Iran is in now as far as the development of their nuclear weapons is concerned. The former presidential candidate expressed his criticism of the Obama administration's decision to refrain from taking sides during the recent uprising of Iranian citizens. I think history will judge a, sig a significant error was made when the people of Iran took to the streets and demonstrated in behalf of their fundamental human rights. And instead of standing up for them and speaking for them, the President of the United States said that he didn't want to jeopardize the opportunities of negotiating with the regime in, in, in Iran. I think that was a serious mistake and a contradiction of what Americans have always stood for, and that is for the rights of people to determine their own futures. The visit to Israel took place the day after the Obama-Netanyahu meeting in Washington. The Republican representatives praised the meeting and stated that good relations continued on lower levels, despite the disagreement between the Israeli government and the U.S. administration. I think we can say uh, with some um, uh, encouragement that uh, the relationship between the United States and Israel is back on track. Uh, the last year has been a difficult one at what I guess I'd call a diplomatic level with obvious disagreements uh, between uh, uh, our two countries, which have been such historic and close uh, allies. But I, I will say uh, that even during that year, uh, the members of the United States Congress across party lines uh, continued to uh, both feel and express uh, the strongest support for the security of the State of Israel and for the relationship between the United States and Israel. It's also true, as President Obama has stated, that even while there were disagreements at the, at the highest levels of the two governments, that the military-to-military -military relationship between the United States and Israel, the intelligence and intelligence relationship between our two countries continued at a very high, close, and cooperative level. But it's good to have the relationship at the top levels of both governments uh, back on track. We are obviously 
more than satisfied with the meeting yesterday that the president and prime minister, President Obama and Prime Minister Netanyahu had in Washington. And we think it could open a new period of cooperation and progress uh, on a variety of issues, including the Palestinian issue. I also thought that the statement President Obama made about America's uh, historic, about continuing America's historic recognition of the special uh, security needs of Israel in this region was critically important in relationship to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty Review Conference in uh, uh, New York at the United Nations a while ago. I'll speak for myself. I think some of the actions taken by the American administration in the last year were mistaken, and they have not not worked. We, we had a conversation with one of the Israeli leaders who pointed something to me was fascinating. I hadn't thought about that. In the 17 years since Oslo, 1993, in every year there have been direct discussions between Israeli and Palestinian leadership, except for the last year. So the policy of, of the Obama administration was not working to achieve the goals that the administration has to advance the peace process. And I think the president, uh, I believe, understands that. And, and I think, therefore, there's, uh, we all know from history that there's never been progress in the peace process between Israelis and Palestinians when there has been disagreement or distance between the United States and Israel. And uh, I think yesterday was a turning point. I hope so. And, that, and I mean that in the sense that there may be disagreements, as, the, as there always are between allies, but that on this peace process, the U.S. and Israel will be working side by side, hopefully with the Palestinian Authority leadership. The visit to the PA Armed Forces bases in Ramallah seemed to have made a big impression on the senators. They praised the troops, stating that they do not believe that these forces will eventually aim their weapons towards Israeli soldiers and citizens, as happened in the past, and even said that there is an intention to bring PA forces to stand at the security checkpoints. I think if the Israelis were deeply concerned about that, that we would hear from them first. But what it has done is it provided some stability for the people as so that the economic uh, and social progress can be made, which there has been significant progress. Uh, the Palestinian security forces, I don't think, will present a threat to the state of Israel. As a matter of fact, I think their development in partnership with Israel is the best thing for Israel because they're performing well. They're highly respected among the Palestinian people where they're, where they're engaged. So I would continue to support a professional police force, a paramilitary force, to allow the Palestinian people to make steps towards statehood. There has been conversation about putting these forces and some of these members at checkpoints, and that is something under active discussion so that the people who are going back and forth would see that there's a security presence from the Palestinian side as well as the Israeli side. Now, the, this is an issue under discussion. There has not been a decision made, but I think that the Israelis wanting to discuss this is an expression of their confidence in the professionalism of this uh, this highly trained group who, as you know, have been trained in Jordan. And uh, again, uh, I've had the opportunity of observing a number of military organizations, and this one I was very impressed with.